going to today's outline let me tell you one more thing we were discussing the presence of writings at the time of uh, biblical history and one of the questions uh, that i asked was uh, where books known about the bible I, I, where books known i gave an answer no the first question was where it was uh, writing known and i gave an answer where books known i gave an answer where libraries known i gave an answer and then the fourth question is have such books and libraries discovered and the answer is so much has been discovered so much that multiple libraries can be filled with those writings fifth question have they found found out manuscripts of the bible and the answer is yes and lord willing we will have a look at some of the manuscripts when we come to the section on canon the sixth question is have they found out artifacts that means statues rings vessels buildings related to the bible and the answer is so much has been found that it is simply mind boggling seventh question have they found inscriptions outside the bible which have a bearing on bible and the answer is so much has been found that it is simply unbelievable and i had made a promise to show you the books which record those inscriptions this evening as i was i came to the library i i reminded myself hey now you have to show because uh, uh, you were supposed to show last time you did not so at least today so i pulled out one volume i have five more volumes but it is sitting at the top approximately 10 feet high and at least today i don't have uh, the capacity to climb on a ladder and pull out those five volumes so let me show you one volume i am putting it against my body to show how thick this book is weight about 3 and 1/2 to 4 kilograms title ancient near eastern texts relating to the old testament why relating to the old testament because uh, relating to new testament is so massive you cannot put in a volume like this and now let me tell you one thing this book was produced 30 50 years ago and 50 years ago related to the old testament if so much material was available just imagine how much material would be available today you may ask brother johnson 50 year old book why don't you buy the latest and the answer is books on bible and archaeology are purchased by a small group of people 
sometimes only 100 copies are printed and even they take 10 to 20 years to sell publishers have to recover their money so these books are so costly that one has to shell out a fortune to buy these books so though this book is uh, 50 years old i had to spend a fortune i don't have uh, i i don't have i have never received the lottery prize to buy this kind of books still i have another five volumes which this is from near east those five volumes are more contemporary more recent than this and they contain inscriptions from the general area of Canaan or Canaan alone, which was given to Israelites. And let me give you an idea. This book that you see, if I put it in the second-hand book market, I can easily get five to ten thousand dollars for this book. So much is the cost of these books. Just an idea why I don't have all the latest. Brothers and sisters, unfortunately, there is a lot of ignorance about materials that have been discovered related to the Bible. The material is so voluminous that no individual library can hold them and no individual can buy them. Even some of the top Bible archaeology libraries have not been able to buy all of them. So much material is available. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, tomorrow if someone comes and says, Oh, well, Bible is an ancient book and not much material is available, at least you can say confidently that much material is available and one volume which Dr. Johnson showed during his Zoom classes was so heavy that he found it difficult to lift and show it to the audience. And believe me, if the Lord gives me strength, in one of the next classes, I will show you the five uh, more volumes which I, I have. They are not thick like this. They are thinner, uh, but they contain much more material. And they come only from the area of Israel, whereas this is from the entire Middle East. With this information in mind, let us go forward. Last In, uh, in the last week, last class, I told you, about a group of uh, people known as scribes. They were people who specialized in copying. Like the stenographers of the 20th century who specialized in type and shorthand. The scribes were the stenographers at the time of the Old Testament. And some of God's commands gave rise and support to the development of the scribes. One of these commands was that people of God should memorize the scripture. People of God cannot memorize scripture if they don't have copies. And people cannot have copies if copies are not made. So somebody has to make copies. Printing presses were not in existence. Please remember, moving type printing presses were invented only about 500 years ago by Gutenberg, Johannes Gutenberg. Before that, there were, there were no printing presses, moving type printing presses. 
and in the old testament times they had to write everything they did not have fountain pens using whatever was available they had to copy in a meticulous manner they did not have electricity they were working in the light of lamps and yet copies were essential so people dedicated their entire lives people with good handwriting dedicated their entire lives in the service of god it was not considered that means biblical scribes becoming a biblical scribe it was not considered a profitable job it was considered a painful ministry very painful and you will understand the pain as we go forward so the practice of copying arose because god himself said memorize it and you cannot memorize if you don't have copies and a few million people who are scattered all over canaan they cannot memorize from one single copy or from two copies so thousands upon thousands of copies had to be made and now there was a catch deuteronomy chapter 31 verses 24 to 26 contains the catch and also the key Deuteronomy 31, 24-26. Brother Johnson, who always posts these verses in comment box, is traveling. And therefore, he is not here to post these verses. So, please note it that you won't get these in comment boxes unless somebody else types them. okay thank you brother mithun brother mithun kumar is posting these uh, references in the comment box thank you and god bless you for making things easier for others deuteronomy chapter 31 verses 24 to 26 says and it came to pass when moses had made an end of writing writing what writing the words of this law in a book until they were finished that moses commanded the levites who bore the ark of the covenant of the lord saying take this book of the law put it in the side of the ark of the covenant of the lord your god that it may be for a witness against thee so the biblical manuscripts at the time of moses once they were written they were not to be distributed randomly here and there they were to be kept beside the ark of the covenant and you know that people could not go to the ark of the covenant the place where the ark of the covenant was people could not go there randomly there were some very strict protocols and once the book was placed beside the ark of the covenant people cannot approach it to read it therefore god himself by giving two different commands one place this manuscript beside the ark of the covenant number 2 memorize god gave rise to a special practice and the practice is the original copy of the canon is not for circulation or for lending it is to be preserved and therefore scribes quickly accurately made copies and once copies were made the original was 
kept besides the ark of the covenant and once it was kept there people did not have access to it this way god made sure of multiple things number 1 god made sure that the canon was preserved from destruction at the same time by asking people to memorize the scripture god made it sure that the canon was copied and copied liberally and copied in large quantities so that every family could have at least one copy brothers and sisters these protocols imposed by god were so powerful and they were so life transforming that the change which came upon the jewish community and which continued up to the christian community and which continue even today they were life transforming changes the original copy was kept safe the scribes produced accurate copies the first round of copies they were not given out they were kept safely as scribe the scribal masterpieces or master copies and then the scribes copies copied from these and they were made available to people and there are records and also there is archaeological indication that there were offices of scribes where dozens of scribes worked at a time at the same time to copy the bible there were tables on on which to place uh, the blank leather there were places where ink was placed known as the ink well and they had some sticks thin sticks like this made of absorbent material in which they dipped and wrote lot of information has come about scribal practices so once they all sat once they all were ready the chief of the scribes or whoever was given the responsibility he would very clearly read the manuscript slowly steadily with clear pronunciation and listening to him all the scribes would write it down this is the way they did it it was not easy but these men knew that god has commanded that his word be memorized and if you have to memorize you have to read it and you have to read if you have to read it you need copies and this is scripture you don't simply make copies carelessly so a generation or uh, uh, the correct word is a class of people came up who specialized in copying excuse me a class of men who had beautiful handwriting who had a steady hand and who felt it as a call to copy the scripture and who had an accurate understanding of the hebrew bible see when the person who is uh, 
reading he sees nebuzardan the person listening the scribe listening he should know that uh, he should know the exact pronunciation of the word nebuzardan and when the person who is reading the original manuscript he says maher sha lal ha shabaz the scribe should already be familiar with the name maher sha lal ha shabaz not an easy work but god's command to preserve the original inside the tabernacle and eventually inside the temple and also god's command to memorize the word of god gave rise to the practice of copying and copying gave rise to the practice of uh, becoming scribes and the school of scribes where they were trained like bible schools of today the schools of scribes developed protocols for writing this way god preserved his word and at the same time god spread his word worldwide it is reported that when the jews faced persecution they ran and went away worldwide and many of them came to india but before these jews came to india the jews were already coming to india for business we all know about solomon solomon had people going in ships to bring gold silver and precious stones and solomon also had ships to bring apes yeah those large monkeys apes and peacocks peacocks were going from india they were buying peacocks from india so right at the time of solomon itself the jews had links with india and eventually many jewish businessmen stationed themselves in india and when they stationed themselves in india copies of the old testament came with them in hebrew language to india and finally when the jews had to abandon their own country and run away as refugees they took more copies with them it all please remember please remember all of this became possible only and only because god laid down protocols which would give rise to these things brothers and sisters when we study any biblical subject and not only church history any biblical subject it should not remain just theory and it has been my burden when i teach any subject not to keep it to just theoretical statements rather i have been giving you so much background information so that you may understand how god worked in history so when we study christology we should study not only biblical verses but we should also look at the implications of christology in human history and that is what we are doing right now with bibliology so god wanted his word to spread all over the world and for that he gave two commands one preserve it to memorize it and memorization is a command given to individuals but god knew that through these two commands an entire enterprise will come up to copy the scriptures and once an enterprise comes up for copying the scriptures the scriptures will go worldwide it is an amazing thing to study the way god has worked 
then around the time of daniel or slightly after the time of daniel the greek at the time of daniel it was the persians and then medo persians but eventually the greeks conquered the whole of middle east and a lot of area they came even up to india the bulk of the jews were sent in slavery outside the jewish nation and it took them less than two generations to forget hebrew language many many of you who are listening to me are from kerala and many many of you are outside kerala and you know that in one generation your children have forgotten malayalam language even if they understand what the parents say they cannot read it they cannot enjoy it i am a person like that i was brought up in north india i understood malayalam but i was unable to take any classes in malayalam i was unable to read it and it took me a lot of efforts some 26 years ago when i came to kerala my children were sent to school lower classes they were learning malayalam a i e e i also learned the same way so it needs only one generation to forget your mother tongue but god produces blessing through every situations romans 8:28 says that we know that all things work together for good to them that love god to them who have been called according to his purpose romans 8:28 thank you brother methun when the jews went into into dispersion slavery and dispersion they learned persian they learned the medo persian languages eventually they learned greek because greek conquered the whole world because of that the rich jews jews have always been fabulously rich a lot of rich jews sponsored a translation of the entire old testament see at that time only the old testament existed they commissioned the translation of the entire old testament into greek and they hired the best scholars for this money was not a problem the translation started approximately around 350 bc or before that 72 scholars did the translation and by 250 bc or slightly before that the whole of the old testament was now available in the greek language god did it on purpose do you know why just as english is widely spoken today all over the world just as english is the international language today greek became the international language worldwide by 400 to 300 bc and once greek became the international language the bible was made available in that international language it went worldwide and with that went the gospel i mean gospel as it was understood in the old testament it went worldwide every command every protocol which the lord gives gives rise to so much blessing for god's people and also for others worldwide that it is unbelievable 
And once this translation came up, it was done, as I told you, by 72 people. Two of them died because translation took quite some time. So that translation was finally concluded by 70 people and therefore the Jews called it the 70. The Septuagint. Today it is known as the Septuagint. And thousands upon thousands upon thousands of copies of Septuagint may, were made and sent worldwide. This gave rise to a practice among Jews to translate the Old Testament into other languages. A scholar by the name of Aquila did a fresh translation in AD 130. Another scholar known as Symmachus made a fresh translation in AD 170. Another scholar known as Theodosian made another translation in 180 AD. I want to tell you, brothers and sisters, God created practices among his people in every generation not only to bless that generation, but also to bless the entire world. Once I mentioned a Bible which sits behind me, it sits just behind me so that any time I am studying, I can just pull it out and check it. I have a little table at my right on which I am placing my hand. I pull it out, place it there, and check it. It contains almost all the English translations known at the time this was made. They use a very scientific... How do you put all the translation into one volume? They made a special technique for that. So as translations multiply, people also develop techniques to make all those translations available to those who want to study the various translations. And this practice started with Oregon, who lived around AD 200. Oregon produced the first known parallel translation. Why do I say first the known? It is understood that of all the Bible related material in the world that were produced in the ancient world, it is understood that less than 1% has been discovered. The remaining 99% or more is still undiscovered. So out of all the material that has been discovered, Oregon's parallel version is the oldest. It is known as the hexapla. It contained the Hebrew Old Testament, a Greek transliteration of the Hebrew Old Testament, Septuagint, Aquila, Symmachus, and Theodosian. Six versions. That is why it is known as hexapla. Hex means six. Let me remind you, the hexapla produced by Oregon in AD 200 had Hebrew and those who do not know Hebrew for them a transliteration. So Hebrew is there and the pronunciation of Hebrew is given in Greek. Even today we have that. Uh, today Hindi Bible is available 
but in english fonts so the first verse is adi me parmeshwar ne and in english adi a a d i adi m e me in this way english transliteration of the hindi bible english transliteration of the urdu bible is also available so please remember this translate god gave rise to all these practices to bless his people bibliology is not just an uh, what should i say theoretical subject we should see how god gave his word and preserved it generation after generation so origen produced his hexapla once again let me remind you it contained the hebrew old testament a greek transliteration of the hebrew then the septuagint the first known greek version aquila another greek version simacus another greek version and theodosian another greek version in parallel columns god has always seen to it number one that the word of god is preserved number two that the word of god is copied and distributed and generation after generation we see that we live in the computer age every kind of bible is available today on computer i do most of my studies most of them on computer and i consult multiple translation when some rare translation which is not yet available on computer which i have to consult how did this practice came today if we have the word of god on computer it all started with a command two commands of god preserve the original memorize everybody which means you make copies from those two commands came such an amazing range of practices and tools all all everything to bless the god of people bless god's people and people of god the jews took it very seriously very very seriously it is us christians who have diluted our commitment to the word of god please remember it is us christians who have diluted i will come to that also later so jews were so faithful to god's command that after scribes a specialized group of scribes came up they were known as mesorates because eventually after the time of christ after the time of christ i am using only as a date not related to the church age paper became available very thin quality leather known as parchment also became available better writing conditions better ink everything better became available and the demand for biblical manuscripts kept on increasing so from scribes came mesorates and the way the mesorates copied the old testament it is simply unbelievable brothers and sisters none of us can do what they did i stop here with that comment and lord willing we will continue there continue from there lord willing next week